Number one, it gives us four different solids and it wants us to know which has the least surface area. So in this lesson, we took a look at when you kind of elongate a shape, the more elongated a shape is, the larger its surface area um, to volume ratio is. So the more compacted, the closer the surface area and volume are together. So certainly B and D are out. Um, and then what we learned in the lesson was that the, the sphere does the greatest job um, or the best job of reducing the surface area compared to the volume. So it's got the smallest ratio between the um, surface area and volume. Number two gives us rectangular prism A has measurements of three by four by eight and rectangular prism B has measurements of five by five by six. So before doing any calculations, we wanna predict which prism has a greater surface area to volume ratio. So basically we're trying to figure out which one is more spread out and less compact. So this second one has measurements that are all really close to each other, five, five, and six. Um, versus this one, the measurements are further apart from each other. So that's going to create a larger um, ratio between the surface area and the volume. So I'm going to predict that it's rectangular prism A that has the greater volume, um, surface area to volume ratio. So then let's calculate both. So if we're looking in shape A over here, to calculate the volume, you just multiply all of these numbers by each other. So three times four times eight, and you'll get 96 for that volume. Then when we do the surface area, remember we're gonna have a bunch of different rectangles, six of them using these measurements. So one of the two of the surfaces are gonna have the dimensions of three by 12, okay? Or sorry, three by four. Um, which is going to give us 12 for each face times two faces is going to give us 24 towards the surface area. We're going to have two faces that have dimensions of four by eight. So that's going to be 32 for each one times two is going to give us 64. Then we're also going to have two faces that are three by eight. And so that's going to be 24 times 2 or um, 48. So then the surface area for this shape um, is going to be 24 plus 64 plus 48. And that's going to be 136 um, units squared versus this volume. And I think they told us inches, right? So this should be inches cubed. Okay, so there's the volume and then the surface area, 136 um, inches squared. So there's our surface area. So then for um, rectangular prism B, we'll do a similar thing. So the volume is gonna be five times five times six, um, which is gonna give us a volume of 150 inches cubed. Then we're gonna go ahead and find the surface area so we're gonna have um, two faces that are um, five times five or five by five for the dimensions. So that's gonna be 25 for that area and there's two faces. So those surfaces are gonna be 50. We're gonna have two that are five by six. So that's gonna be 30 and there's two faces that are um, 30. So that's gonna be six, 60. Then we have another set of five by six. So that's gonna be another two faces at 30. So that's gonna be 60 more to our surface area. So then our surface area, when we add that all up, is gonna give us 170 inches cubed. So then when you look at the actual ratio here, okay, of surface area to volume, so we would do 136 divided by 96 for this first one that has a ratio of 1.42 approximately. And the ratio over here is gonna be surface area of 170 divided by volume of 150. And that's gonna give us 1.13. So in fact, that first one that we talked about is gonna have the greater 
um, ratio. Number three, suppose you have two pieces of ice with the same volume in different shapes. If one of the pieces has a greater surface area than the other, it will cool the beverage faster than the ice with less surface area. So describe two different pieces of ice that have the same volume but have different surface areas. So let's just do an actual cube of ice first. So if we do a cube of ice, let's say it's side lengths of four. So the volume of this is going to be four times four times four, which is 64. And then the surface area is each surface here is going to be four times four or 16. And there's six surfaces. So 16 times six is going to give us 96 um, units squared for the surface area. So then let's do another um, shape. So if we just did a rectangular one this time that has the same volume. So we said we want the same volume, um, but have different surface areas. So in this case, if we just do like a longer one, okay, so let's decide, um, let me just decide that this kind of length here is going to be two. So 64 divided by two gives me 32 left over for this. So I'll just do eight and four here. So eight times four is 32 times two is 64 for the volume. But now our surface area is going to be different because surface area here will have four times eight, which is 32. And there'll be two of those surfaces. Okay, we'll have um, this kind of piece here will be two times four which is eight, and there will be two of those at 16. And then um, we'll also have this, two of these surfaces, and the dimensions here are eight and two. So those are gonna be 16, and there's two of those. So the surface area of this one will be just adding those together. So the surface area of this one is gonna be 112 units squared. So this, um, second shape that I made will cool the be cool the beverage faster since it has a greater surface area. Number four, suppose this two-dimensional figure is rotated 360 degrees using the vertical axis. Each small square represents one square inch. What is the volume of the three-dimensional figure created? So we're going to get um, kind of like a cylinder um, underneath a cone here. So we'll get this is the base here. And then um, that will also, this circle will also happen here, creating our cylinder. And then on top of that cylinder, um, we'll also have a cone. And so the cone will be created Um, with that same base. So now if we want to find um, the volume, we would find the air or the volume of this cylinder on the bottom, okay, which is going to be area of the base times the height or on the top here, I guess. Um, and so the radius here is two. So two squared is four times pi and then times the height, which is two. So the volume of the cylinder is eight pi. And then for the cone, um, it's got the same base, but when we do this, we're gonna do area of the base times the height divided by three. So the area of the base is still that four pi. And now the height here is three, and then divide by three. So these will cancel. So the volume of our cone is four pi. So then the volume of our overall shape, we will just add those. So the eight pi for the orange cylinder plus the four pi for that green cone will give us a total volume of 12 pi um, inches cubed. Number five, we have a triangular prism that has a height of eight units. The base of the prism is the image shown. What's the volume of the prism? So remember volume will do area of the base 
times the height. And so we're going to need to find the area of the base. And they gave us the height was 8. So our base is this triangle shown. So we're going to need to do the base times height here. So we're going to need to find this. And we see that we have a right triangle with a 65 degree angle. So this side is the opposite side and this side is the adjacent side. So we can set up a tangent function. So tangent of 65 equals X over four. So we'll multiply by four. So we'll do tangent, uh, sorry, four times the tangent of 65. And that will be that length. So X is equal to about 8.6. Um, so now this is 8.6. So we'll go ahead and find the area of this for our big B. So the area is going to be base times height divided by 2 since it's a triangle. So we'll do 8.6 times 4 divided by 2. And that gives us a base area of 17.2. So then that's going to go into our volume formula. So now volume is area of the base, 17.2, times the height of the prism, which is 8. And that gives us a volume of 137.6 units cubed. Number 6. We have a cone-shaped container is oriented with its circular base on top and its apex on the bottom. So it's like this. Um, and it has a base radius of 12. So this radius here is 12. Um, and a height of 8 inches. The cone starts filling up with water. What fraction of the volume... Um, what fraction of the volume of the cone is filled when it reaches two inches? So once the water gets to two inches here, um, what will the fraction of the volume be? So for this, um, we can just figure out what fraction of the height we have. So our new height is going to be two versus our original height, which was eight, because we're going to be dilating this. Okay, so it's going to be dilating this down. So then this is going to equal um, one fourth. Okay, so we're only going to get a fourth of the height. And so then when we do the volume, okay, remember volume is the scale factor cubed. So then this is going to be one sixty fourth of the volume. Find the volume of a pyramid whose base has a square of side lengths 4 and that has a height of 10. So remember, volume formula for a pyramid is base times height divided by 3. Okay, our base here is a square um, with side lengths of 4. So we would do 4 squared for that area. And then they told us that the height is 10. So then we're going to be doing 16 times 10 divided by 3. And we're going to get 53.3 repeating for our volume and then units cubed. Number 8, a solid has volume of 4 cubic units and then a surface area of 10 square units. A solid is dilated and its image has a volume of 108. What will the new surface area be? So they're giving us both volumes. Okay, so when we compare new volume to original volume, that's going to give us our K cubed or our scale factor cubed. So we'll go ahead and figure that out first. So our new volume is 108. Our original volume was 4. So 108 divided by 4 is 27, and this is our k cubed. So this will help us get our scale factor by cube rooting this. So now we know that our dilation or our scale factor is 3. So when we have areas or we're comparing areas, we're going to take our area 
times our scale factor squared to get our new area. So our original area was 10. We're going to multiply this by 3 squared. So 10 times 9 gives us our new area of 90 square units.